Hola a todos y bienvenidos a esta primera parte gratuita que hemos preparado sobre el proceso de pintura de Valeria. Valeria es el nuevo busto que han sacado los amigos de Big Child y para todos aquellos que nos estéis viendo desde su canal de YouTube, yo soy David Arroba y he pintado la versión oficial. Hola a todos, yo soy Garbiñe y voy a ser la voz de David en la versión en inglés. El proceso completo de pintura lo vais a tener, lo vais a encontrar publicado en Miniature Art Academy durante el mes de febrero. Para todos los alumnos de Miniature Art Academy, Big Chai nos ha proporcionado un código de descuento que tenéis activo desde ya para comprar su página web. Además, en el mes de febrero, Garbini y yo cumplimos un año en el Pledge con Miniature Art Academy y por ello vais a tener 5 vídeos en vez de 4 como el resto de meses. Finalmente, muchas gracias a Big Child por patrocinar este producto y que podamos tener el proceso de pintura completo de Valeria. Espero que os guste y que lo disfrutéis y si es así, nos hacéis un gran favor compartiendo y suscribiéndoos a los canales. Un abrazo a todos y nos vemos en los siguientes vídeos. Adiós. Hi everyone, if you don't know us because you are watching this video on Big Child's YouTube channel, we are David Arroba, I am a professional painter and I have painted the official box art of Valeria for Big Child. And I am Garbiñe and I will be David's voice on the English version of the video. We have prepared this first chapter of the painting process of Valeria so that you can see it for free on our YouTube channels. And you will be able to see the rest of the chapters from February on. If you are a Miniature Art Academy student, you will also have a discount code to buy on Big Child Creative's website. Um, we have to thank Big Child for sponsoring this video and we hope you like the video and the next chapters that are going to be uploaded. Um, if you do like this video, please share the video and leave us a comment so that we can know that you liked the video. See you soon, bye! Bye! Here we have the bust, Valeria, ready to start painting it. As you can see, we have primed it with black primer. We have used black primer because we are going to paint a lot of areas using the non-metallic metal technique and David prefers to use dark bases. We have added to the palette some tones, burnt red, flat earth, old rose and black. All of them are Vallejos. And of course, we start with the most important thing at the beginning of every project. We start defining the general color scheme we want for the bust. We will divide the armor into golden metallic areas and very dark silver metallic areas. We start adding some base colors to these areas to start differentiating one kind of metal from the other. For the golden areas, we mix flat earth and burnt red. Doing that, we are going to achieve a quite reddish base to start working. For these first steps, we want these base colors to cover all the surfaces in a quick and easy way. This wing she has in the shoulder area is very interesting because you can paint it in a lot of different ways. It doesn't need to be metallic. It's a very important part and it's going to have a lot of prominence in the general idea David has for this bust. Painting it golden, we are going to try this area to draw a lot of attention. We want it to be a very important focal point because it's very close to the face. Here you can see how we have added this base to other areas that will also be golden and it's very important to add at least that base color to all the areas that will be golden to determine which areas or which points of attention are the most important ones in this bust. With these golden metallic parts we are going to try to achieve a very high contrast with the rest of the armor that will be very dark. These golden areas will add a lot of color because they will contain quite a lot of yellow which is a primary color and because of that they will draw a lot of attention. So we have to use it in very strategic points so that the viewer sees more easily and better the areas we want them to focus on, the parts we want them to see. 
Here you can see all the areas that will be golden. We have differentiated all these areas with the base color. Once we've done this, we start working on the dark silver armor. We start with dark grey tones we get by mixing black and all rows. Yes, all rows. We know this might sound weird to some of you, but this way we will get grey tones that contain that touch of red we obtain with all rows. And this way it will match a little bit with that reddish base we have added to the golden areas. One of the things David had very clear when he painted this metallic surface is that he wanted to paint a metal with a lot of texture to make it look like it's worn and old. He didn't want a very new armor. You can see that from the beginning we are adding that texture with the brush. This bust also has a little bit of texture that is already sculpted, so this will make it easier for us to create this effect. Thanks to the size of this bust, it will be easier to achieve this kind of metal with a lot of texture. If it was a smaller figure, it would be harder to paint and understand this kind of texture. With a bigger scale, it's easier to understand this texture effect. What we want to do now is to place the most important shines on the armor. Without a doubt, to achieve this metallic effect, it's very important where we place the lights and shadows. We need to create that quite big contrast so that our eyes perceive that this surface is metallic even if we are using matte paints. It doesn't have metallic pigments, that's what this non-metallic metal technique is about. See how we have chosen some areas where we will try to focus all the attention with the metallic shines, on the chest area most of all and also in the upper part of the shield. As you have probably seen in the final photos of the painted version, David has created an ambience with a very lateral light. I mean, there is a side on the bust, just the side we are painting now, that receives more amount of light while the opposite side is much darker. Here you can see how we add some more shines to the inner part of the armor to define these areas. Don't worry because we won't speak a lot about this now. What we are going to do is to analyze deeply all the non-metallic metal technique during all the painting process. The most important thing now is how we illuminate some areas where we will place all these shines and how we keep that very dark tone of the primer in other areas. It's important to use a pretty big brush on these first steps so that we don't paint forever. Then we will have plenty of time to change to a smaller brush when we need to start detailing. This big brush will create a bigger brush stroke. These secondary shines we have mentioned will be shines that will have less intensity than main shines. The main points of light that this metallic surface will have are going to be stronger while the secondary ones will be weaker, less intense. But these secondary shines help us understand and define the metallic surfaces. Now we add to the palette a lighter tone, that contains more amount of white. In this case we are going to use Vallejo's Ivory. And we are also going to use Vallejo's Basic Skin Tone. This last one is warmer. Vallejo's Ivory has a slight touch of blue that makes it greenish, and Basic Skin Tone has more amount of yellow, making it warmer. One thing you can see looking at the palette is that ivory has more amount of white than basic skin tone. We add a small amount of basic skin tone to the previous mix and we start adding some stronger lights. Doing this we will enhance the contrast. We add this new light adding texture at the same time. We are constantly looking for that metal with a lot of texture we mentioned before.
To create and enhance the contrast, we add a bigger amount of basic skin tone and ivory. At this point, David was drawing all this texture slowly so that you can see how the brushstroke looks and the effect we want to achieve with this texture. We repeat the process, but a little bit faster in other areas or in other metallic shines. We are going to focus mostly on the main shines, on the strongest ones. Another aspect that is also very important when we paint non-metallic metal is the rhythms of the metal, the directions those shines will have. Don't worry because we will see this on the entire painting process of the bust and we will analyze this deeply. David's goal with this painting process is that you understand the non-metallic metal technique. See that we are starting to add some less intense shines in the shoulder plate. Now we have changed the brush. We are going to use a smaller one. This is very important to achieve a smaller brush stroke and to define and detail even more. Adding different quantities of basic skin tone and ivory, depending on the areas we are working on, if it's a bigger surface, the surface of the shine will probably be bigger and lighter, but what we want is to add or continue adding that new texture with a smaller brush. When we add this kind of textures, it's very important that our eyes perceive the differences that different sizes of brushes create, because different brushes will create different textures. Once we finish the bust, after a lot of layers, these differences created by different brushes and different sizes of texture will make it look more realistic. To achieve the cast shadow effect of the wing over the lower part of the metallic part, we won't paint this area, we will leave it darker to create the cast shadow effect of one metallic surface over the other, of one element over the other. These cast shadows will help us separate the golden metal of the wing from the dark silver metal of the shoulder plate. To make the cast shadow effect more understandable, we will try to achieve this pointy finish that will help us see that the wing is casting this shadow over the plate. As we said before, apart from the main shine, we will have secondary shines that won't be as strong, as intense as the main ones, like this one we are drawing now, in the center of the shoulder plate.
At first, we will enhance this shine little by little because we don't want to add too much white. And because the rest is still unpainted, it's still almost black, it's very easy to add too much white. Of course, we will add this level of detail and texture to the most important areas of the metal, to the areas we mentioned at the beginning of the video, to the main light areas and the most interesting parts of the bust. A good advice that it gives you when you want to create this kind of texture is that it's very important not to use a very new brush, because if you use a not very new brush, you will achieve a more irregular texture and it will look more natural. To achieve a good non-metallic metal effect, it's very important to advance on every metallic surface of the bust. We can't finish the shoulder plate when the rest of the metallic elements are unpainted. We need to see the metallic effect as a whole. With this first part of the painting process, we wanted to show you how to achieve this kind of metal with a lot of texture and how we add these brush strokes and texture with the brush. See that we are starting to outline, the outline on the metallic surfaces. Outlining is also very important to achieve the non-metallic metal effect. Because the edges are areas of the metals that usually reflect a lot of light. Now we do the same on the rest of the shines. We want to create a more overall effect. At first, when we make the sketch of the non-metallic metal and when we have a very big surface or a lot of areas that will be metallic, it's very important where we place those shines. That's why when we paint that sketch, we check if we like the shines. If we don't like them, we can modify the shines. You will be able to see this during the process and we will also explain the reason why we modify those shines. See how we make the light area of the shoulder plate bigger and more intense, reducing the dark area. This way it looks like it receives more amount of light. With a very light tone we achieve by mixing quite a lot of ivory and basic skin tone. This basic skin tone will add warmth to the mix because it contains yellow and we will achieve a very strong point of light and a very big contrast. Thank <laughs> you. 
We hope you liked this first and free chapter of Valyria, and the second part will be available in February on David's Pledge on Miniature Art Academy. Thank you very much, and we'll see you soon. Bye!